Hi students, in this video we are going to discuss the basic concepts of kinematics. Generally, which we are going to see in our 8th and as well as 9th class textbooks. Either in the CBSE curriculum or ICSE curriculum or SCERT curriculum, generally we have the concept of kinematics. Now, we will discuss what is meaning of kinematics. Before going to discuss the concept of the kinematics, we should come to know what is meaning of mechanics. Mechanics is, for example, for us, you see one of that uh, example, here a road is there like this. Here a road, this is a road. On this road, you are moving on your bicycle. Whenever you reach the point A, we should apply little amount of the force for your motion. Whenever you want to reach B from A to B, no need to apply the force, but the body is in motion. If you want to reach from B to C, you have to apply more amount of the force, motion is very very less. Whenever you want to see from C to D, point C to point D, here less amount of the force is required, but motion will be more. Sometimes, whenever you come to this position D and you applied the brakes, at this case, force is not there, motion also not there. If you consider the example at A, both force and motion is there. In the case of AB, force is not there, motion of the particle is existed. Here, come to this position, no force, body is at rest. Here, we studied the motion of object with respect to force. Motion of object with respect to force. Here, motion of object without expecting the force. Without regarding the force. Here in this, rest position of the body with respect to force. Here, totally three cases are arised. In the first case, we studied the we studied the motion of object motion of object with the reference to force in the next case we studied the motion of object with the out reference of force without the reference of force in the third case the body is at static position that means though the force is existed the body is at rest position now here totally we applied the mechanical energy for the movement of the body that branch of physics is called mechanics the branch of physics which discuss about the force regarding the motion of the body is called mechanics now mechanics is of three types number one kinematics number two dynamics number three statics now what is the meaning of kinematics kinematics is a branch of mechanics which is used to study the motion of object without the reference of force dynamics is a branch of mechanics which is used to study the motion of objects with the reference of force statics is a branch of physics and as well as a branch of mechanics which is used to study the 
rest position of the body with reference of force why it is rest position the word static means rest position let us discuss some more important terminology that what we are using in kinematics the first terminology we are going to use as rest what is meaning of rest generally we are going to use the term rest in various cases i am taking rest the wall is at rest universe is at rest bench is at rest general terminology but the original terminology and the definition is the constant position of your body with respect to time and surroundings the constant position of the body with respect to time and surroundings is called rest what does it mean for example say a school is there last year the position of the school here only this year also here only next year also here only means the school is at a rest position means with respect to time the position does not changes for example i am at rest that means my position does not change with respect to surroundings and as well as the child that is the meaning of rest so always we should compare our position with respect to the time okay now let us come one more example or one more definition that is motion here motion is one of the word which we are going to use in a very familiar manner now what is meaning of motion for example consider a body this is a bus which is at a place a after certain time it is moving towards the place b after certain time it is moving towards the place b in this time interval the body is in motion at place a the position of the body is not changed means the body is at rest even at place b also the position of the bus is not changed this means the bus b is at rest meanwhile in between a and b the bus is in motion that is the position of the bus changes with respect to surroundings and as well as time interval now the body is said to be in motion till now we discussed the concept of rest and as well as motion the constant position of the body with respect to time and surroundings is called rest variable position of the body with respect to time and surroundings is called motion in the case of motion if the body is started at a now this point is called starting point and where is ends its motion is called terminal point starting point and as well as terminal point in between the position a and as well as b the body is said to be in motion there are different kinds of the motion is there they are motion in one dimension motion in two dimension motion in three dimension now let us discuss what is the meaning of motion in one dimension motion in two dimension motion in three dimension for example i throw a ball now the ball always moves in a straight line here i throw the ball now the ball always moves in a straight line means the ball is moving in only one direction such kind of the motion of objects is said to be motion in one direction if you consider this is an arrow if you throw the or if you bow the arrow the arrow moves in a straight line now such kind of the motion also is said to be in uniform motion or otherwise motion in one dimension then what is motion in two dimension motion in a two dimension can be for example if we can resolve that motion into 
two coordinate axes that is x axis and as well as y axis such kind of the motion is said to be two dimensional motion then what is three dimensional motion if the motion is considered or motion is divided into one more axis that is nothing but z axis then it is said to be three dimensional motion totally the motions are totally divided into three categories unidimensional motion two dimensional motion and as well as three dimensional motion now let us discuss one more fundamental topic that is vectors and scalars the topic is vectors scalars one more common terminology that we are going to use in dynamics or generally in physics is scalar quantity and vector quantity first of all let me discuss what are the examples of scalar quantity what is the distance between your school and house for this question answer may be 1 km or 2 km or nearby in which direction it is then we can say either towards east west north south north west like that what is your height 10 cent 10 meters or 1 meter or 3 meters like that we can say here in the case of height we are not using the direction we are using only magnitude how many benches are there 10 benches are there these 10 benches are not there in the east direction west direction or south direction here no need to represent the direction numerical value that is magnitude only represented that is called scalar quantity with the magnitude and the direction is represented it is called as a vector quantity the physical quantity which has only magnitude without any direction is said to be scalar quantity the physical quantity with both the magnitude and the direction it is said to be vector quantity now come to this definitions they expressed in magnitude only means numerical value only we are utilizing no need to use the direction vector quantity they are expressed in both magnitude and direction physical quantity with magnitude only called scalar quantity physical quantity with both magnitude and direction is called vector quantity these are not scalars simply numerical values then we can add multiply subtract them easily they can be added by simple arithmetic means here they have direction also to do the direction process a resultant is required so for that we can't do simple arithmetical process in the case of vectors it does not have direction so we can't easily plot on the graph why because graph is a method which is used to represent the scalar quantity by using the graph we can bifurcate the system into the parts so here the direction is there we can represent the direction of a vector easily by plotting on a graph these are all the basic ideas about the scalar quantities and as well as vector quantities let us discuss what are the basic parts of a vector quantity now we will come to know how to represent a vector as we already said vector always shows the direction what are it may be the direction for example say i walked a distance of 3 kilometers in east direction that we can say how to represent from the starting point onwards if you divided that one into the form of graph i walked a distance of 
फोर किलोमीटर इन ईस्ट डायरेक्शन फ्रॉम द स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट टूवर्ड्स ए पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन वी वॉक ए डिस्टेंस ऑफ फोर किलोमीटर्स मीन्स हियर वी आर शोइंग बोथ द मैग्नेट्यूड एंड डायरेक्शन एंड वन मोर एग्जांपल वी कैन से लाइक दिस इन द टीवी वाइल शोइंग द साइक्लोन एफेक्ट्स दे विल शोस दैट द साइक्लोन इज सिचुएटेड एट ए डिस्टेंस ऑफ फॉर एग्जांपल से 15000 किलोमीटर्स डिस्टेंस इन द नॉर्थ वेस्ट डायरेक्शन इन अ पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन दे इज टू एक्सप्रेस व्हाट डज इट मीन द शोइंग बोथ द magnitude and as well as direction for example say if you consider east west north south my house is located at a distance of 5 kilometers 5 kilometers in north west direction from the school north west direction from the school see here we are using magnitude and at the same time direction so it is said to be represented as a vector quantity if you observe this all the examples here a starting point is there that starting point we are calling as tail in what direction we are moving that is called head so a vector can be considered as two points minimum tail and head this means in the particular direction we are showing for that circle that is called directed line segment vector is a directed line segment its length indicates magnitude here the magnitude example is 4 km here the magnitude example is 5 m or something whatever it may be units are quite common the arrow indicate in what direction it is moving here in this example the direction is towards east in this direction the direction is towards uh, north west so these are on the basic information about a vector quantity yeah now we are going to discuss a very important fundamental topic in kinematics distance traveled and displacement distance traveled and displacement for example if you consider i want to move from place a to place b place a to place b we can move from place a to place b in the straight manner directly we can move for example you want to move from school to house directly you can go to the house or otherwise you can move in a zigzag manner into that street this street in one more street like that this means here the next part we are going to cover it may be like this or if we can travel like this in a different different directions we can travel but whatever it may be the direction the initial point and terminal points are same for example if you consider a train is there the train is started at wiser for example the train is godavari it is started at wiser and then it is came to after crossing rajamandri it is came to vijayawada from vijayawada onwards again it is moves towards hyderabad see here if in this case it is traveled in a long distance what is that long distance why is a good to vijayawada and vijayawada to hyderabad it is came if it is want to move in a shortcut form it will travel like this means here two types of the paths we can observe one is the shortest and direct path another one is the longest path every body can travel in between the initial and terminal points in two methods one is the shortest path another one is the longest path if you observe here the length of the path covered by the body 
in such an interval of time length of the path means total length of the path total length of the path is called as distance traveled then what is displacement shortest distance covered by the body see here the shortest distance is ab for example here the shortest distance is directly from vizag to hyderabad then what is the longest distance vizag to vijayawada and vijayawada to hyderabad so distance traveled is nothing but longest path covered by the body during its journey then shortest path during its journey is called displacement see it is a scalar quantity why because in which direction the object is moving we are unable to understand whereas well as in the case of displacement in what direction exact direction with the exact magnitude that we can give it. so displacement is a vector quantity both of them are length only so for that cgs unit of length that is nothing but cgs unit of distance travel is centimeter mks unit is meter whereas well as cgs unit of displacement is also centimeter and mks unit is also meter generally we are going to represent both either distance traveled or displacement by using a letter either d or s in the next video we are going to discuss about the graphical representations and as well as the problematic part that are present on distance traveled and displacement thank you